It was now a race against time. Would the British get to the German lines before the Germans could man their guns? The answer came quickly. The Germans got to their machine guns, they opened up and all hell was let loose. Soon, no man's land was strewn with dead and wounded men. Many had advanced only a few yards. Entire battalions were destroyed in just a few short minutes. 100,000 men began to make their way towards the German lines. In some sectors, battalions ignored the orders from the top and they didn't set off at a walk. In other sectors, they followed their instructions rigidly. So at the northern end of the battlefield, the advancing battalions were in rigid lines and they were struck from the front, from the side, and the attack quickly began to fall apart. In fact, in many parts of the northern end of the line, no British troops actually reached the Germans. So a very different picture begins to emerge quite quickly. But that picture emerges for us in hindsight. It doesn't emerge for Haig. It doesn't immediately emerge for the British High Command. Because, of course, the problems of getting reliable information back from those attacking battalions are such that initially it's not realised how badly things are going, so more waves are thrown in and good is thrown after bad. The weapons that devastated the British troops that morning included the machine gun. The German Maschinengewehr 08 could fire up to 400 rounds a minute from covered defensive positions. The 08, like most machine guns of the time, was derived from the British-built Maxim machine gun of the 1880s, the first self-powered machine gun. The machine gun allowed a single soldier to put down a murderous spread of fire. But how powerful were these guns? And what were they like to fire? I travelled to Bisley Rifle Range to find out more. Hi, right, John. Hello, Carl. How you doing? Oh, very well. This is it. This is the legendary Vickers machine gun. Then. That's right. This is a, a, a Vickers machine gun of around about 1915 by the serial number on the top here. OK, so we can roughly date it because it's a very early number. Literally, it was designed to just spray the battlefield and, and take down the enemy soldiers. There are various stories of, of guns firing over a million rounds, you know, on the Somme, you know, in a day, in 24 hours, um, with just only a few firing pins and spring snapping uh, and just a couple of barrel changes, you know. And ammunition-wise, uh, these look very similar to the Lee Enfield rifle. That's right, it's exactly the same. This ammunition could be swapped backwards and forwards if they needed to. OK, and then that would just feed through, would it? And that would just feed through here. So they, these are just bog-standard cloth belts with little uh, brass tabs that are yeah. stapled on them. But later on in the war, the ammunition came up in boxes and they and had loading machines. And they would machines. have to feed the, into yeah. the cloths? You'd have usually around between a four and a six-man gun team that would be on a gun like this or, okay. or a Maxim. That's quite a lot, four to six, isn't it? It's a lot of things to carry. I mean, yeah. you've got a, uh, it's quite a heavy gun, you've got the water to carry, you've got the ammunition to carry, particularly the quantity of ammunition. And what's the range again? The range is 3,000 metres maximum, OK? Obviously, you can, you know, you've got a very high elevation to do that. Yeah. How about you have a go? I would absolutely love to have a go. OK. Show me, show me, show me. Let's make it happen, then. I'm looking forward to this, John. Okay. Can you tell? <laughs> Short bursts. Woo Short bursts, okay. Woo what would it have done? What kind of destruction? It would have just ripped through people, wouldn't it? it would Torn people to pieces. Mown them down. Torn people to pieces. Can, can we do something to see how devastating it would have been? Yes, we can. We have some clay which we can bring in and we'll show you uh, what happens to uh, the clay when it goes through and the cavitation effect of, uh, of a 303 round, which uh, as it penetrates through flesh and, and, uh, and body, it causes a big cavity, which is, is what causes the damage. Oh 
unbelievable. That is unbelievable, John. Look at that. And that is scary. That is absolutely scary. Look at the perfectly formed hole. That's just absolutely completely blown it apart, hasn't it? Well, that's what it does. That's the size of the bullet. It's 0.303 of an inch. If we line that up there. You can see the size and diameter of the hole it makes. Yeah. This is clay. Obviously, unlike flesh, it will stay in its position. Okay, it hasn't got a memory. But that's what it does to the human body. And uh, it's called a cavitation effect. And as it goes through your body, your body is made up of 70% liquid. It will push that all around. The hydraulic shock that affects all the other organs is, is absolutely devastating. This is so it rip you apart? Rip you to pieces. Also, if it doesn't rip you to pieces, it would certainly cause you serious, serious injury that you'd probably die of secondary injuries. The bullet also mushrooms as it goes through. It doesn't go through as a nice little sharp projectile. It actually mushrooms out in a mushroom shape. So obviously it pushes more. more and more damage. It can break and fragment. It doesn't necessarily come out the same trajectory, the hole here, as it would come out the back. It could yeah. ricochet around the bones and come out, and break up. So the damage that it would cause to human body is, is horrific. It's absolutely terrifying. We go back to the first day of the Somme when they were all running over the top or running into the guns, okay? And you knew that that was the effect that was going to happen to you. Think of the bravery and the courage of the soldiers in that period, knowing that that could happen to them or to their friends. Knowing that they had to run towards that. It humbles you. It's actually quite terrifying to go on. Mm.